Hi guys, welcome back. Fred here, AMP Math and Engineering, and we're going to do a quick video for you on the matrix stiffness method. So this is going to be one of uh, many videos in this series. This is a tricky subject. It's a long subject. The questions are really long and tiring, and we're going to start you off with the easiest of the three, which is the beam. Okay, so we're going to look at a beam and we're going to take it easy at first. This is a pretty straightforward video. It's a simple video. We're going to identify the degrees of freedom and the restraint coordinates of the continuous beam, and that's a really important part of uh, getting these questions correct. And also, we're gonna form the beam's joint load vector P. Okay, so uh, that, that doesn't look too bad, right? Um, first of all, we're probably gonna need to identify a few of the terms in here so that you're not su super confused. Uh, the degrees of freedom uh, is referring to any point on the uh, any joint on the beam, so any kind of um, either a support or a point in which the moment of inertia changes. So here is a joint, that's a joint, that's a joint. This is also a joint because it's at the end, so it's a free end, so that can move. So that's a, those are our degrees of freedom. Restrain coordinates are essentially where the beam cannot move, and we're not considering X movement in this beam when we do this. We're, we're just ignoring that. And also form the beam's joint load vector P. So that's essentially the point loads acting on the degrees of freedom. So uh, that's just a little rundown for you. Let's take a look at uh, the first part of the question. And let's get started. So we have identified the degrees of freedom and the restraint coordinates of the continuous beam. So what is the uh, degrees of freedom? Well, I'm going to show you by drawing something that's called the analytical model. Analytical model. Okay, so the analytical model is a really important part of uh, the matrix stiffness method. It's the, the first step that you do when you tackle a problem. And what you're going to do and how to solve for it is you're going to draw the beam out again without the loads on it. So you're just going to draw the loads. And essentially what you're going to do is you're going to label uh, in, 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 like a, in a coded manner from one to whatever um, the, the parts that can move and the parts that are restricted. So we're going to start, and this is the convention, okay, is you're always going to start from the left and you're going to go to the right and when you're labeling you're always going to write the degree you're going to start with the degrees of freedom so let's go ahead and start with those so let's take a look at this uh, fixed end so as we know a fixed end doesn't uh, move in the y direction and it doesn't rotate so that's uh, there are no degrees of freedom there remember degrees of freedom mean the, the beam is free to move so let's go to the second joint and before we start this let's go ahead and let's number our joints so just starting from the left to the right Okay, we're going to number each place where it can move, and we're also going to uh, number the members. Okay, so we have uh, members one, two, and three. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at joint two. So joint two uh, cannot move in this direction, right? So that's not a degree of freedom, uh, but it can rotate. So uh, the notation that we're going to use is we're going to draw a counterclockwise arrow. It's always the same, and we're going to use, start with number one. Okay, so. It doesn't matter if it's a force or, or a moment, okay? It, you just go one, two, three, four, five, depending on, um, and you'll see what I mean by that here. So we're gonna go over here to the next joint. It can't move vertically, but it can rotate, so that's another degree of freedom. So that's our second degree of freedom. Now, as you can see at the free end here, this free end is free to uh, displace in the vertical direction. So what that means is we're going to, and this is always the notation, so always start if the, if the joint can move vertically, or displace, you start with the vertical displacement. And you always draw it up. Okay, so that's gonna be our number three now. And it can also rotate at this point. So we also have rotation here, which is our fourth degree of freedom. Okay, so these are our three, our four degrees of freedom here. Now we're gonna go back to the start, and now we're gonna label the reactions. And we're gonna do exactly the same way, but we're just gonna use a little different notation. So we're gonna start with the vertical reaction here. Okay, that's going to be as it's a fixed joint, so we have a vertical reaction there. That's number five, and we just denote that with an arrow with a line through the middle. That's, that's considered a reaction, okay, in our analytical model. And we have a reaction, uh, reactionary moment. It's counterclockwise always. There's a line through it, and it's number six. Let's go to joint two. We have a reaction a vertical uh, force there, seven, and we have a reaction vertical force, eight. Perfect. So uh, we, this is our analytical model, and it's done. That's it, the analytical model is finished. And what the analytical model gives us is actually two things that we're asked for. It gives us the degrees of freedom, right? One, two, three, and four at joints two, three, and four. And we are given the restrained coordinates, okay? So essentially this, the reactions, which are five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, so uh, what, uh, what is asked of us next? Also form the beam's joint load vector P. 
So what is P? P here, okay, now P is a vector, and if you don't understand how what, what P is for, or what we use it for, that's fine. Um, I just wanna get, you know, you'll figure that out when we do the full question, but I just wanna give you an idea of how we go about labeling vectors and how we go about putting things into vectors in this in this method. Okay, so P in every question is always going to take the dimensions of the number of degrees of freedom times one. Okay, so number of degrees of freedom here are equal to four. Okay, so that's going to be a four by one vector. And now uh, what we're going to do is the we have code numbers on the right. So the code numbers in this question refer to okay the number of degrees of freedom okay because what the p vector is is it's the the number of external forces acting on the where we've numbered our degrees of freedom so one two three and four so if there's a rotation at one a rotation at two a force at three or a rotation at four the, and they're external those are going to go into this vector okay so how do we do that well let's go and take a look at one we're going to start from one here, which is what we labeled, and we're going to look at one on our analytical model, and we're going to go up to our, our, our real model with our loading, and we're going to see that we do have an external moment here of 50 kilonewton meters, and the 50 kilonewton meters is in the opposite direction of what we've notated as positive. So that means that it's going to go into P as a negative value, okay? Negative 50 kilonewton meters. Okay, let's go to our second degree of freedom now, okay? Our second degree of freedom is uh, a rotation at joint three. And if we come up here, we have no rotation here. Okay, so that is not a, a value that's going to go into P, so it's simply zero. For example, if we have two here as a rotation and we have a vertical force here, like for example, a point load, that would also be still be zero because this needs to correspond to the uh, either a moment or a force. Okay, so it needs to correspond to the degree of freedom. If, if it was a force, it would correspond to number eight, which is a reaction, which is not what we're writing here. This is just for the degrees of freedom. Let's go over here to three. Okay, and three, we do have a force here. Okay, it's 100 kilonewtons. It's at um, point D or joint four, whichever one you want to refer to, they're the same thing. And now we can, uh, we can write that in. It's opposite of our sign convention. So this is our positive sign convention in our analytical model. And this is negative, okay? So that's going to be 100 kilonewton. And there is no rotation at the end, so that is going to be zero. So that's our joint load vector. Very good, so the question is finished. Um, I could just show you actually a really quick way to make this a little more simple. And this is just a little bit of a trick. But as you can see at the end here, we have a cantilever portion of the beam right there. And that is determinant, and so, it, once you go into the full question, you'll see why you might want to do this. But if you have four degrees of freedom, you're always going to be working with four, uh, one by sorry, four by one vectors and four by four matrices and stuff. You can actually make the question into a two by two matrix and two by one vector question if you take this hundred kilonewton force here, okay? And you because this is determinant, we can go ahead and transfer this force, right? So this can go over here. This is two meters, right? So this in fact, is a 200 kilonewton meter moment. And we can go ahead and transfer that kilonewton meter moment here because we cut, so it's opposite and the same, right? That's, and there we go. So we have now a beam in which we have um, a fixed support and two roller supports. And when we do the analytical model, you'll see that we're only going to have two degrees of freedom now, right? because that cantilever portion, which had a third and a fourth degree of freedom are now gone. So that's gonna simplify our question, and then we have the reaction three, four, five, six, okay? So that's just a little bit of a trick there. Um, maybe it's a little too advanced at this point if you're watching this video, but you know, keep that in mind, and uh, when we get into some more complicated stuff, this will start to make a little more sense. Anyway, I hope that video helped, guys. Uh, that's a quick video on the matrix stiffness method, and uh, stay tuned for some more complicated content on this topic. Thanks for watching.